Physicists find evidence of exotic charge transport in quantum. Material, true to form. A strange metal quantum material proved strangely quiet in recent quantum noise experiments that Rice University published this week in Science. The measurements of quantum charge fluctuations, known as shot noise, provide the first direct evidence that electricity seems to flow through strange metals in an unusual liquid-like form that cannot be readily explained in terms of quantized packets of charge known as quasiparticles. The noise is greatly suppressed compared to ordinary wires, said Rice's Doug Nettleson. The study's corresponding author, maybe this is evidence that quasiparticles are not well-defined things or that they're just not. Their in charge moves in more complicated ways. We have to find the right vocabulary to talk about how charge can move collectively. The experiments were performed on nanoscale wires of a well-studied quantum critical material with a precise 1 to 2 ratio of itobium, rhodium and silicon YBRH to C2. The material contains a high degree of quantum entanglement that produces temperature-dependent behavior if cooled below a critical temperature, for example. The material instantly transitions from non-magnetic to magnetic at temperatures slightly above the critical threshold. YBRH to C2 is a heavy fermion metal, with charge-carrying quasiparticles that are hundreds of times more massive than bare electrons. In metals, each quasiparticle, or discrete unit, of charge is the product of incalculable tiny interactions between countless electrons. First put forward 67 years ago, the quasiparticle, the concept physicists use to represent the combined effect of those interactions as a single quantum object. For the purposes of quantum mechanical calculations, some prior theoretical studies have suggested that strange metal charge carriers might not be quasiparticles and shot noise experiments allowed Natelson. Study lead author Leong Chen, a former student in Natelson's lab, and more than a dozen co-authors from Rice and the Technical University of Vienna, to wean together the first direct empirical evidence to test the idea. The shot noise measurement is basically a way of seeing how granular the charge is as it goes through something, said Natelson, professor of physics and astronomy, electrical and computer engineering and materials science and nanoengineering. The idea is that if I am driving a current, it consists of a bunch of discrete charge carriers. Those arrive at an average rate. But sometimes they happen to be closer together in time, and sometimes they're farther apart. Applying the technique in crystals, made from the 1 to 2 ratio of itobium, rhodium and silicon presented significant technical challenges. For example, the crystalline films, which were grown in the laboratory of lead to wing co-author Silk Passion had to be nearly perfect, and Chen had to find a way to maintain that level of perfection, while fashioning wires from the crystal that were about 5,000 times narrower than a human hair. Rice co-author Kim Yao Si, the lead theorist on the study, and the Harry C. and Olga Kawi's professor of physics and astronomy, said he. Natelson and Passion first discussed the idea for the experiments while Passion was a visiting scholar at Rice in 2016, C said the results are consistent. With a theory of quantum criticality he published in 2001 and has continued to explore. In a nearly two-decade collaboration with Passion, the low shot noise brought about fresh new insights into how the charge current carriers entwine with the other agents of the quantum criticality that underlies the strange metallicity, said C whose group performed calculations that ruled out the quasiparticle picture. In this theory of quantum criticality, the electrons are pushed to the verge of localization, and the quasiparticles are lost everywhere on the Fermi surface. Natelson said the larger question is whether similar behavior might arise in any or all of the dozens of other compounds that exhibit strange metal behavior. Sometimes you kind of feel like nature is telling you something. Natelson said, This strange metallicity is the in many different physical systems, despite the fact that the 
microscopic, underlying physics is very different. In copper oxide superconductors, for example, the microscopic physics is very, very different than in the heavy fermion system we're looking at. They all seem to have this linear in temperature resistivity that's characteristic of strange metals. And you have to wonder, is there something generic going on that is independent of whatever the microscopic building blocks are inside them?